Hi everyone and welcome back to the Colour Cave and also to the penultimate day of Cave Miss. It's lovely to have you here and we are going to play with some art stuff today. This should have been a live stream. I was given the opportunity to take a few days away with Mr Gem, which is something that we don't get very often. So I decided that we would just do this as a, as a normal video instead. So apologies for missing out on a live stream. However, we are still going to have lots of fun. I'm probably sitting in a hot tub drinking Jack Daniels right now in the snow. So today is a great video. I decided to purchase every single art subscription box I could find. We should have had nine boxes and unfortunately we only have seven. I did kind of have a suspicion that this could possibly happen. Yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll see how we get on. The two boxes that are missing are the Let's Make Art box and we didn't get past checkout with that one. Unfortunately, they were wanting over $70 in shipping to get the box here, which is twice the actual value of the box. So I had to veto that one. The second one that's missing is Sketchbox. It was ordered, it has cleared customs in the UK and it hasn't made it from customs in to the mail service. If it arrives before this video goes live, I will slip it in just at the end. But as it stands right now, there is no sign of it and it's not registered within the UK mail service. These things happen sometimes, but I was a little bit disappointed. So the boxes that does leave us with are the following. I have Upcrate, I have Sketch and Story, Art Snacks, Paletteful, Smart Art, Scroller Box, and oh, not one, but two boxes from Artful. So Artful is the quarterly subscription box. So I have the quarterly box, but I also have the upgrade box as well. So we've got extra goodies for that this time round as well. There will be a giveaway at the end of the video. If you're excited about being in possession of an art subscription box for yourself, you can hang around to the end of the video and you can get yourself entered in the giveaway. So uh, now that we're uh, now that we know what we're doing, let's get to top down view and we can get going. So the idea behind doing this video is really just to show you what you're getting for your money with these boxes. We are going to unbox all of them one at a time. We'll take a quick look at the supplies. We'll maybe do a little bit of testing out. So this is going to be a long video. It's really just to showcase what each box is about, especially if you're a person that's perhaps swithering on whether or not a subscription box is for you. So we're going to start off with the two boxes that cavers will be familiar with uh, if you watch the, any of my unboxing videos. And the first one that I have here is the Upcrate box. Let me shove the rest of these out of the way. So the Upcrate is a monthly subscription box. It is based in Germany and I paid €22 Euros for this box, which is roughly about £20. And it does come with free shipping to the UK. There may be additional shipping rates if you are elsewhere in the world. And that's something that's worth checking up on. And that was one of the main factors, I think, that that is important for people. For example, me getting the boxes from the US over here, it's pretty expensive. So I would like to give you as much information po as possible on that so that you can make up your own mind. So yeah, the upgrade is a monthly box. And uh, this follows a very similar format to scroller box as well which will be the next box that we're going to look at so this is the December box and in these boxes we get our selection of art supplies we also get a little magazine a featured artist and some stickers as well and we get an art prompt that we can create an artwork with the supplies to fit the prompt so off we go We've got this nice little package here, that's our supplies in there obviously. So this is our bottle post, this is the magazine that comes with this box. It tells us a little bit about the supplies and how to use them. There's usually some tutorials as well, but there's other arty stuff in here too. Great with a cup of tea. <laughs> here are our stickers for the month. and They've got a little theme going on, these are super, super cute. Really like it. You can submit your own designs to go as a sticker as well. And uh, there's a little bit of information there on the bottom. <laughs> so we've got this little this little bit of paper here. This isn't the featured artist, I don't think. Artsy Seasons Greetings, obviously this is the box nearest Christmas. That's really nice, so a little Christmas note in there. So here is our featured artist, and this looks remarkably like markers. Oh, Gem's favourite, yay. And uh, the featured artist is Sweeney Boo. This is very stylized. I quite like this. 
So on the back, this tells you a little bit about Sweeney Boo and some of their art from their Instagram, which the tag for is down the bottom if you want to go and check them out. Yeah, so this kind of gives it, we always like to look at the surface first before I look at the supplies. So we have a, a pad of Talon's Bristol paper, which is smooth, smooth, smooth. 20 sheets A5 and it is 246 grams. <laughs> That's very, very precise. So yeah, I'm assuming this will be marker paper. Although you can use other things with it. And some people really like to use pencil on Bristol paper. Not me, but other people do. So let's see what we're getting for our 22 euros apart from the paper. Now, generally, marker paper is quite expensive. So we shall see how that balances out with the supplies that we've got. Markers, ahoy. Right, we have a selection of uh, Windsor & Newton Pro Markers. Now, these are double-ended alcohol-based markers. And they feature a very, very fine bullet tip like this. And they also have a pretty good chisel nib on the other end. So there's lots of different ways to mark make with these markers. So let's see what colours we've got. We have Cool Grey 2 and Cool Grey 3. I hope this isn't one of these ones where they've just given us a random selection of colours. Cool Grey 2 and Cool Grey 3 should be pretty close together, so that's kind of a waste of a marker in my book. We've got a rather attractive shade of turquoise, blush, berry red, and fuchsia pink. In addition to that, we have a Pigma BB pen, and this is a, this has got a pretty good brush tip on it. We've had one of these before in a subscription box. I don't think it was an upgrade though. The, the brush tip on this is nice, but it's not too flexible. Um, what else have we got here? Pen touch, one millimeter fine point, permanent opaque marker. So I think this must be a, like a paint pen. Yeah, it's got a ball bearing in it. And this looks like white, so this would be good for highlights and it will probably go over the top of these markers. We have a uh, Hardmouth pencil in an H. We've had one of these before as well. Uh, H hard pencil, so not too much smudginess going on. And we've also got a little pi oh, Pigma Micro... Pigma Micron 005. This is my favourite width of fine liner because it is about as teeny weeny as you're going to get. I use these all the time. Absolutely minuscule and you can get such delicate lines with this. So that's made me happy. Okay, let's take a quick feel at the paper. Oh yeah, super smooth. Very, very bright white as well and fairly thick. Granted, this is probably my least favourite type of box. I don't like a bunch of markers. I'm not really into markers. So this box for me is very sort of mediocre for uh, £20. But let's see what it says in the bottle post. Now we're just going to take a quick flick through here. I'm not going to spend ages going through. Okay, so they've deliberately given us two grey markers, which I find really interesting, and three random strong tones. So they are doing the random thing again, which I, I am thoroughly against. Uh, waterproof non-toxic alcohol-based ink. So there's a little bit of information there on the pro markers and the colour range. And this is one thing I really like about Upcrate. Usually the main product, they give you the colour palette. So if it's something that you want to go and buy more of, you can, you know, take an educated guess at it before you start making any wild decisions. The, the Pigma Micron, the 005 is a point two millimeter nib on it. Uh, these are archival, they're waterproof once dry. You have to be very, very careful with this particular one though. The nib is very delicate and it's just because of the size, but it creates some amazing, you know, fine lines, you know, as almost as if you were using a, a very sharp pencil. The Pigma pen, uh, the brush pen, as, as I was saying, the, the nib is flexible, but it's not like super bendy, like uncontrollably bendy. It's actually a really, really nice pen. Uh, it's also permanent as well and water resistant once it's dry, which is really nice to have in a big brush, uh, a big, to have in a brush marker like this. The pen touch. Oh, it's not white, it's fluorescent orange. Oh no. Otherwise known as offensive orange. <laughs> Ah, the special ink in this pen lights up under the black light and the one millimetre fine tip is perfect for small details. So if uh, any of you are still in the 90s and have a black light kicking about, well, you'll see some fun with that. What a random supply. Pencil, it's a pencil. They're not really saying much about the paper. They're saying it's suitable for most mediums. Okay, and they're talking a little, a little bit more about talons in this page as well. Sweeney Boo is the co-captain, the featured artist. So, as uh, she's in Canada... So there's a little bit about her there and some of her artwork as well. She's, hey, her characters are lovely. 
a bit on the how-to video. So this this is the co-captain creating the featured artwork that comes in the box. That's really good fun to, to sit and watch as well. So here's the art hacks section and this is a, now a permanent feature and they're get, this gives you tips on how to use the supplies that come in the box, which is handy if it's a supply you've not come across before. If it's something that's new to you, you can read through this and it really gives you the chance to start off, you know, not being going into things completely blind. I personally like to not do that. I like to find things out for myself. But if you're the kind of person that needs a little bit of guidance or it's just something completely alien to you, this is a great section in this magazine. Oh, we have a review of 2021. That's nice. Again, the end of the year, they're showing you snippets from throughout the, the year of boxes. Yeah, I'm in here. <laughs> That's so nice. It's unexpected, but it's nice. And this is, I love looking through these and I've said this in a lot of the unboxing videos. I really enjoy looking at people's artwork in a tangible sense here. It's all very well scrolling through Instagram, but it's nice to see them in print and see people's hard work. This one in particular, I absolutely love. I was blown away when I saw this one. So we have another artist featured in the magazine here, which is Alba. Tells you a little bit about them there and their art as well. And here are some snippets from the Upcrate Battle 26, Inspired by Nature. Some of these are lovely as well. And Mysterious Mind. I really struggled with that prompt, goodness me. So we have a, a how-to from Captain Crate as well. This seems to be a feature that's recurring now as well. So you're getting some inspiration and help from the captain himself. And we've got the Sailor of the Month. I always like this as well. This is absolutely fabulous and it's just a nice little snippet into, you know, some of the other people that have an Upcrate too. And we have another artist here as well. Inspiration Radar. So the this section pertains specifically to artists you, that use the supplies that are in the box. So in this case, it's markers. So they're showing you some people's Instagrams that tend to alcohol markers in their work. And on the back is the most important thing is the Upcrate Battle. Love has no colour. That is an interesting prompt. I may or may not do some of the art prompts. Obviously, we'll not be doing any of them in this video, but into January, we can pick and choose from the boxes that we've got from this video and maybe pick one out and do something with them. Okay, so just before we move on, I am going to test out these supplies really quickly. And I'm starting with these grey pens because I'm not convinced that having two greys was the best idea. Uh, these are pretty whiffy, these markers. Obviously, alcohol markers tend to have a smell. There's not much uh, not much you can see about that, but uh, these ones are quite stinky. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, if we... If we were to layer up our cool grey too, which is this one, we could probably get something approaching this. So I think that's a bit, uh, a bit of a moot point myself, but what, what do I know? Now, hang on a second here. I have a brush marker in amongst all this. Was I supposed to get a brush marker? Okay, this just takes the biscuit and I'm really not happy about this. Three random strong tones and a few brush markers. I do not have a few brush markers. I have one. The rest are all pro markers. Oh, this is this is not no, just no upcrate. So I have got a chisel tip on this particular one and a brush nib on the other end, and that is the only pen. This colour here is the only pen I have as a brush marker. The rest are all those little tiny nibs. That's really disappointing. Really, really disappointing. Oh, upcrate, come on, you're better than this. So we have quite an interesting selection of colours. The colours are nice and vibrant and these pens do layer up well. That can be quite dependent on the paper, but I think we're okay with this. I do want to check for some bleed as well. And we're good. Nothing soaked through onto the page underneath. Do you see what I mean about how similar these greys are? I need to check out the offensive orange as well. I'm going to give this a really good shake before I get started. You can shake with one hand. The H pencil is as expected it's very very hard but you can make some really light and nice precise lines with it it feels okay i tend to find these pencils feel quite cheap and i don't really like cheap pencils it, you know when you're just using it for a sketch layer it's not really an issue and it will do a good job for you bad boy whoa oh my goodness you know how i talk about offensive colors this is it right i was actually talking about this in the live stream at the beginning of cave miss it's usually oranges and yellows that are offensive and that that is just that epitomizes an offensive orange that is absolutely insane 
It seems very opaque and very vibrant though. I did have a bit of a, a mega issue there, but now that that's settled down, the, the paint flow seems to be quite good and it actually feels quite nice to use. And it's nice having a paint pen with a delicate tip on it. I quite like that. And here is our brush pen. You're going to like this. Oh yeah. Really generous ink flow. And when this dries, it's got a really nice, I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like a sepia colour. So it means that if you're using more delicate neutral shades, it doesn't stand out and sort of overpower what's going on. I really like these pens. I see I've had one before. It's long been used up. It's long gone. And I'm actually quite glad to have another one because you can create some really interesting line work with this. It does take a bit of practice if you've got an unsteady hand. Working with a brush pen like this, it might not be perfect straight away, but persevere. And uh, my very, very favourite, the little Pigma Micron. Look at this. The lines are so skinny. And I absolutely love this for shading. And using a nib this size really suits my... If I do do anything in ink, I tend to stick with a sketchy style. So lots of short lines. And these pens are great for it because it feels like, like you're using a, a sharp pencil. Okay, so for €22, Euros, for me personally, very disappointed. I'm not A selection of markers, one of which happens to be a brush marker, two greys that are really close together. The quality of the markers is not to be disputed. These are very high quality markers, just not something that I use. And especially if I do use alcohol markers, I like a brush tip and it's why I've got Copic sketch markers. That's my kind of go-to for that. This is one of these things, how often realistically are you going to use this paint pen? Unless that is a specific medium you like to use and it's fluorescent, I, yeah, just no. Pencil is a pencil. So I would say the winners in this box are really these two pens because they're, they're very, very good in their own right. Not inspired at all by the contents of this box. I think the paper's nice though. Oh, my paint's leaked through. And I definitely use this paper for something else, but not necessarily for the contents of this box. So for me, unfortunately, the upgrades, it's a thumbs down this month. For those of you that are really into markers though, get excited. So our next box is Scroller Box. And I've decided to do these two together, as I said, because they tend to follow the same format. It's kind of the same idea. Scroller Box is the UK box. And I paid the princely sum of £16.25. I do pay a yearly subscription to Scrollerbox, so I pay like a full year in advance. If you pay on a monthly basis, it's £16.95. And if you're outside of the UK, shipping fees do apply, so you would need to check for your specific country. Ooh. Okay, here is our featured artist. Look at this. That is, that is severely cool. See, I feel inspired by this. This is, ooh. Yip Fong Ray from Malaysia and there is um, a portfolio address here for you to go and check out if you want to see more of this because I know I certainly do. I love stuff like this that's a little bit different. See now I'm excited. Scroller box has excited me where Upcrate couldn't. <laughs> so here is our little scroller zine so very similar to the bottle post and we'll take a little look at that in a minute. Produced exclusively for scroller box, SQ toned sketch tile, all media jet black card with a medium surface, 200 GSM and there's 10 sheets of it and it's made by Art Gecko. I love Art Gecko products. I have a black Art Gecko sketchbook. In fact, I've got two and their paper is excellent. So I know that this is going to be good. I love the square format as well. I'm, I'm right into square format. All of my sketchbooks now are square format too, although my Art Gecko one isn't, but never mind. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited about this. I am super excited about this. I've got a wee bit of texture. You would get away with, with coloured pencils on that as well, which again, appeals to me very much. But let's see what else is going on here. Oh, got our little sticker that matches our featured artwork. And I always like to play the jigsaw game. And this one's fairly straightforward. I think it's in there. I did it. I did it. Oh. I mean, the other thing that scroller box always give you that I always forget about is a sweet. And this month it is a Werther's Original. These are amazing. They're hard uh, butterscotches, I suppose. So good. So bad for your teeth, but so good. We have got Spectrum, Spectrum Noir Metallic Paint Markers. And we have a gold, silver and bronze. Um, just wondering what size the nib is. Uh, 0 0.7 millimeter, super fine. Oh no, wait a minute. Let's open them up. <laughs> This is a really nice, really nice box as well. Oh, this, oh, this is exciting. These feel really, really good quality. Oh, okay, so we've got a range of sizes. That's even better. Well, they are wedged. They're not going anywhere. These feel weird. They've got really thick barrels on them. 
Right, so we have got uh, the gold one is a four millimeter. Oh, and it's got like a it's like a pinched wedge shape tip on it. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, oh, oh wow, that smells. Oh, <laughs> looks like we're gonna get a wee bit squiffy off us today. The the silver is a zero point seven millimeter, so this is gonna be weenie. Oh, it's super weenie, and y'all know how excited I get about a weenie dip. Look at that. Oh, that's gonna be amazing. I'm excited about this. And the, the bronze is a three millimetre, so it's out uh, when it's a bullet tip as well. So we've got really interesting range of nibs and colours and oh yeah. So I'm really these feel really good quality, so I'm hoping that they live up to the, the, the exterior appearance, um it's exterior impression. We've got a few other wee bits and pieces in here too. We've got a Jelly Roll Moonlight 10. I like Jelly Roll gel pens. I don't use gel pens very often, but when I do, I seem to get on well with the Jelly Rolls. We've got a Derwent Sketching Pencil in a 2B Circular Barrel. I'm not really that keen on these. I prefer the Derwent Graphic Drawing Pencils, but uh, the, these have got quite thick cores on them. So we can give that a wee bit of a sharpen and try that out. So 2B, we've got Smudgy Smudgy. Not really sure how helpful that's going to be because, again, we would mostly use that for sketching out an underlayer. And we've got a Posca pen. We've got a black Posca pen. Now, that's quite interesting. Why would we need a black Posca pen? We could use negative space. Maybe it's for correcting mistakes. These are water-based paint pens. And a 3M is kind of, I would say that's like the medium nib. A uh, little bullet nib like this. I do sell these in the stash shop if you are looking for one of them. Very reliable. I use these all the time. The only gripe I have with Posca pens is they are not refillable. So once you're done with this, it goes in the bin. And it's something that they really need to look into. You can replace the nibs though, which I find quite odd. You, no replacement paint, but you can replace the nibs. But very reliable. They work on loads of different surfaces. They dry quickly as well. They give you great even opaque coverage. And you can layer them up as well. Let's see if there's any additional information I need to go over here. These markers are extremely pigmented. Brilliant opaque coverage. This is us talking about the uh, the metallic markers. And they, you can use them on a variety of things. You can sign up as well for a discount. Uh, if you sign up for a Spectrum Noir account, you get 10% off just through Scrollerbox. The, the Posca pen. The, this will be great for outlining your work or blocking out sections of colour. Well, again, if you're careful, you could be you should be able to use the negative space of the black paper, but okay, that's fine. The the jelly roll moonlight you you could have purple or pink, and these these also work under black lights as well. What is it with black lights this month? Yeah, so the moon yeah the moonlight pens these are designed specifically to work on black paper, and they stick out like a sore thumb is the phrase that I would use. So it's not a case of we have to put this on top of our other pens. You can put this straight onto the black paper, and it just kind of goes like that. So we can look forward to trying that out in a little minute. So we'll have a quick zoom through the scroller zine and then we can test out. Oh, hang on, I forgot about the paper and the pencil. It's a pencil. I wonder how many times I'm going to say that in this video. <laughs> this slick black sketchbook will bring a brilliant contrast to your metallic palette. Acid-free, robust, tactile, soft touch cover. Oh yeah, so it is. That is extremely durable and can wipe clean to keep it looking brand new. <laughs> of course, I'm going to want to wipe clean the cover of my sketchbook. It does, it feels nice though. How did I miss that earlier? Right, we'll take a quick nip through the scroller zine here before we test out the supplies. So here is the overview. So we've kind of done that bit already. I sit down with the December featured artist. So that's the little interview part there. To get your cup of tea out again. And some tips and things to try with the markers. And here is the scroller gallery from the October scroller box. Oh, this one, this was one with the, um, yeah, out of the lamp. Oh, <laughs> well done to everyone. These are, these are really, really nice. Art themed trivia. Oh, goodness me. Okay, if you want to entertain yourself over the festive period, you can. A very short and sweet magazine this month. And the scroller challenge, which is the art prompt, is out of the darkness. Oh, that's a lovely prompt and it fits in beautifully with these supplies. I am desperate to try <laughs> these markers. I've never seen these before. I'm going to prime these on another bit of paper because I don't want to waste a second of this precious black paper that's in that's in a square format. I'm, I'm doing this very gently with the tiny nib. Okay, first problem, that has actually split the nib. This is too small a nib. Oh no. How are you supposed to prime these markers if you've... If it's going to destroy the nib in the process. Oh, that is an out and out fail. 
Oh, it's gone back together. Okay. That is damaged though. Oh. Oh no. I, I don't think you're going to be able to see that. The the fibers have basically um if the fibers have just gone like that and that was that was pressing down on the nib which you've got to do to let the paint down. Oh, and they're bent slightly to the side. Oh, that's a shame. It still it seems to be working fine though. It doesn't seem to have affected it in any way. Uh, let's see. Oh no, did you hear that? Oh. Okay, so we're going to have to be very careful with this. Oh, that noise is awful. That's such a shame. I think it's still operational. Yeah, it's still operational. I think I'm just going to have to be careful with it. And I wasn't being particularly heavy handed there. I do know how to prime paint pens. But look, can you see the splatter that's come off that? Um, That's just because the, the fibres have split. There we go. Oh, this is lovely. Oh, look at that. The paint itself is lovely. Even the same with the silver. Oh, yeah. I really like these. I seem to remember, I'm pretty sure, I don't know whether it was last year, I think it was the year before, we had black paper and metallic something. It was Derrant pencils. Ready? Oh, wow. -y. So, variety of line widths as well. And all you have to do is twist in a brown to suit yourself. Lovely. Yeah, these pens are nice. Uh, it's a wee bit of a shame about that one, but a 0.7mm nib, if you're going to press that onto something, then it's going to put a lot of stress on those fibres. So I'm not surprised at that. But uh, yeah, overall, I mean, it's still perfectly usable, so we can do something with that. Here is our little jelly roll. These take a wee while to get going sometimes as well. You do have to let them dry, but you can see how much that's standing out in the paper. It's like, hello, I'm here. And these roller balls I find quite reliable. I, I don't get on well with roller ball pens generally. It's something I've always struggled with. I don't know why. But I seem to I seem to be able to cooperate with the jelly rolls a bit better than some of the other gel pens. Again, nice easy, even coverage and you can layer these up. But you can see now that it's starting to dry. Look how look how opaque that is. It's just absolutely fabulous. And this purple is a really nice colour as well. Good for sketching and you're not going to be able to see that. Obviously, you can erase it as well. I suppose you could use it to your advantage a little bit. Um, but it's going down great on this paper. This paper's really, really happy to just do its thing. Okay, so uh, the, the black Posca will behave much in the same way as the Spectrum Noir pens. So I'm just going to see what it's like for, for, um, for omitting or cancelling out what we've got. Come on, Posca. So it's cutting through the metallic colours quite nicely and on the actual black paper itself I just want to see how much it's going to stand out. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, uh, yeah I really like this box, this is uh, this is a good box. It's a nice balance of supplies that aren't too out there, the supplies fit well, well together, the paper's great and the prompt's lovely as well so all in all I would say this is a, this is a fairly good box and I am most pleased for my not even £17 that I've paid for this box. Definitely. And these see these markers feel really good quality. The the only downside is that the the fact that those nibs split, which is a it's a real shame. I'm a, I'm a little bit upset about that. I'm not, not gonna lie. So yeah. So if you use the posca on the paper, you can see it. So you could get some very subtle shadow effects with that. That would be quite nice for that. I think maybe they could have added something else, but I can understand they've given you versatility. Also, if you make a boo boo, you can use it to correct your boo boo. Yes, okay, so for me, scroller box for £16. Yay! Excellent box, well done, scroller box, and thank you very much. The next box we're going to talk about is Sketch and Story. Now, this is where things get interesting because this is a little bit different. Sketch and Story is a UK based box, it only comes out once every two months. It's always wrapped in really pretty paper as well. But the difference with Sketch and Story is it's a little bit more personalised. As you can see, it's got my name on it, beautifully hand-lettered. These boxes are usually feature hard-to-find and handmade items from smaller manufacturers. I don't even want to use manu the word manufacturers. People that make stuff. And the boxes are carefully curated so this is done on a much much smaller scale the price for the sketch and story box is 25 pounds per box but as i said that's every second month and it's the odd months of the year so this is the last box of 2021 which was came out in november oh okay so this can, sometimes can be watercolors sometimes can be stationary items as well so uh, we've got we've got another sweetie a, a crunchy bit these are amazing uh yeah that's for mr gem though not for me so we have a, a featured artist here. Look at this. This is lovely. 
So let's see what we've got. Hydracolor. <laughs> oh, spangly. Spangly, spangly watercolors. Ruby, Diva, Sol, Shamrock and Royal. <laughs> You've got great taste, it says on the back. I love it. So we've got a little set of watercolors there. We have got some Ecoline brush pens. I've come across these before and I have to say I was a little bit underwhelmed by them. It was the pastel set, which I have been reliably informed are the least whelming of all of them, but that these are actually really good pens. So I'm keen to try these out. They are water soluble brush pens, so uh, you, you, you've you got a lot of manoeuvrability with them. Uh, we've got a mahogany and apricot. Ah, Mahogany, apricot and spangles. Okay, I am dying to find out how spangly this is. We've also got two fine point glitter pens, opaque paint markers as well. But blue spangly and pink spangly, what more could you ask for? So we're, we're fitting in with the, the spangly dangly bits here. And we've also got a star stencil. Oh, how cute is that? Oh, that's nice. I like that. Okay, let's see what is going on here. Sketch and Story Chapter 17, Masquerade Ball. So this month we have a theme focused on the most festive parties of all, Masquerade Balls. You will find a couple of matte colours for shadows and skin tones, that's what these are for, and then a whole range of glitters and shimmers both in paint and pen form so you can let your imagination fly with all the fabulous gowns, costumes and masks paraded by glam glamorous bells of the ball. So the handmade paints, the hydrocolour paints, the spangly dangly paints. This is an exclusive set of glitters, exclusive people, Handmade by Elena for sketch and story. Glitter watercolours can sometimes be patchy and chunky, but Elena's glitters are smooth, vibrant and absolute delight to paint with. Be sure to try them on both dark and light paper. Well, that's convenient because we just happen to have some dark paper, don't we, huh? Royal Talons Ecoline Brush Pens. So that was the apricot and the mahogany pens. Broad tipped, juicy, water soluble with soft, flexible tips. These pens are perfect for lettering or painting alike. Use the shade mahogany for cast shadows, dark skin tones, sketching the outline of a dark mask and maybe a deep wood banister as fine ladies descend the stairs. Use shade apricot for fairer skin tones and sparkling lights. Marve Uchida uh, Deco Colour Glitter Markers. Oh, that was a mouthful. These lovely glitter markers contain permanent alcohol-based ink that is quick drying, water resistant when dry. Starry stencils. Use these starry stencils to paint a wave of stars or sparkles across the ballroom or dazzling lights from the chandelier. This is an excellent set of supplies that goes well together and I like that there is an indication of what to use each thing for. I think that's really nice. Handmade watercolour paints are expensive. They are super expensive. So I think we've very much got our money's worth for our £25 here. I would like to test these out. This is my only complaint about the sketch and story boxes is it would be nice to have a surface even just to test these out on. And uh, the, the, the kind of standard that I feel comfortable with in a subscription box is three sheets of paper, one to test your supplies out on, one to do your artwork on, and then a spare just in case. Or if your first one goes well and you really love your supplies, you can paint or draw something else. Um, so I, that's something that I would like to see in these boxes. Okay, this is just some mixed media paper. This is the Faber Castell mixed media pad, and I've also got some Claire Fontaine black paper here, the paint on paper, which is very reliable and very um, multimedia friendly. Multimedia friendly? Multimedium friendly? Anyway, yeah, you get it. I grab a water brush. Okay, let's go. Okay, mm that's not what I was expecting at all. I was expecting that to be a lot more glittery. It's actually, the, the particles in this are so fine that it's it doesn't really feel glittery, it's more shimmery. I was expecting, I was expecting that to be a lot more red, basically. Okay, okay, adjust expectations. Uh, let's try this one. They're very, very hard as well. It's taking a lot of water. There's no, you know, there's no give underneath that. The, the, the palettes themselves are very, very hard. So they've been compressed pretty well. I'm a little bit sad. The, the, the particles are so small, it almost looks metallic. It's not, not what I would class as glittery. They're shimmery, even on my hand there. And for me, these, these would be used over the top of something to give them, to give them a sort of shimmery sheen rather than, because there's, there's very little, I'm not explaining myself very well here. There's no pigment to back up the glitter. 
I just thought I would try again now that that's uh, had some water sink into it. But yeah, I feel like these need to be used over the top of something else. So I would draw something coloured pencil or paint something and then I would use these over the top of them. The eco line markers. Oh, so juicy. So lovely. Again, brush tip, really, um, really easy to manoeuvre and manipulate and get different line widths. And also, say, water-soluble, so we can start messing about with that. So, see, I would probably use the marker, create something with the marker, and then use this shimmer over the top. The pink and the green are a little bit more lively than the other ones. I've got this peach marker as well. That's quite a nice colour. I quite like that. So here are the glitter markers. This is the pink one. Yeah, that's nice. I can see the glitter in there. Again, very fine particles, so it gives more of a sheen rather than individual glittery, you know, particles. It's pretty though, I like it, and it's a nice colour of pink as well. It's not too, it's not too outrageous. Blue's nice as well, look, what a lovely shade of blue. Nice free-flowing ink in those as well. Lovely. Okay, I just want to quickly try these on dark paper. I'm going to try the stencil as well. So I'm hoping for a bit more, a bit more excitement here. That looks much better on black paper than it does on white paper. Need to see what it's like when it dries though. Yeah, these are great on black paper. <laughs> yeah. Interested to see how this blue comes up. You can see straight away though, they are they are much better suited to dark paper. Although they are still quite dark in themselves, the, this red one is almost dry and you can see it's coming up beautifully. So personally, I wouldn't even bother using these on white paper because look at the difference. Like it's crazy. The problem is now that these Ecoline markers won't show up particularly well on the black paper. You can see that's disappeared already and this one isn't. Because these are uh, semi-opaque. Well, in fact, they're trying. They're not semi-opaque, they're transparent. But the glitter pens should work really well on this paper as well. Yeah, wee. Okay, so that's a bit, a bit of a mixed bag, really, if you want to use all the supplies together. Uh... Uh, yeah, if I was going to use them in something, I would have a base colour of some description, either in pencil uh, or something like that, and then I would use the these paints over the top. They're they're much, much better on black paper, and you could do something really amazing on black paper with this. Let's have a quick do with the stencil, because I like things like this. Okay, it's fairly flexible, which is good. Uh, oh, let's do, let's do this one here, and I want, I'm going to use the pink pen. I have to do it. Mm-hmm. So we should get a reasonable amount of precision. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Okay, okay, point taken. Now it's interesting that the ink is pulling around the edge of the stencil. And then when I pull it away, it's bleeding out. So yeah, I don't know how much use your stencil is going to be. You maybe have to leave it in place and wait for it uh, to dry and then take it away. Uh, okay, so how do I feel about this box? I'm like middling, middling. I'm relieved is the word I would use that these pens work well on black paper because I'm kind of underwhelmed by what's going on on white paper here. I do particularly like the little glitter pens and I think if I was going to do a masquerade artwork it would definitely be on black paper. All in all, a nice box. Do I feel it's worth £25 this time round? No. It's, I know how much work goes into making handmade paints and these are by no means underpriced. But it's just that visual disappointment going from here to here. It's like, oh, okay. It was, I felt a little bit deflated. But when I got them onto black paper, they've redeemed themselves. The Ecoline markers are nice. They're, they're, they are really nice markers again. And these are useful colours and it's nice to have practical use useful colours and amongst all the glitter. I, I'm kind of like in the middle with this box. It's not a, not a definite thumbs up and it's not a either. Um, I'm kind of in the middle. So next up we've got Art Snacks and this is a monthly offering from the US. So for this uh, there are two sizes of boxes. This is the bigger box and I paid 39 US dollars which is about 28 pounds and 50 pence. The shipping was around £7 as well. I did get a discount, so all in I ended up paying about £27 for this box. And I have got no idea how to get into this. So this is, in terms of subscription boxes, this is uncharted territory for me. I have never had one of these before. So the way this box works is the smaller box has a core set of supplies, which is also in this box, but you just get extra stuff in here. Oh, oh, and it's in a zippy bag. 
love a zippy bag. I'm excited about this. So we've got, uh, oh, this is, this is a zigzag sketchbook. We've had one of these in an upgrade recently and I actually quite like these, so I'm really glad I've got another one. The zigzag book, uh, 300 GSM, so I'm assuming this is watercolour paper. Natural white watercolour paper folded into an accordion. Oh, I've just seen something amazing. Look, it's a little weedy weedy one. Oh my God, is this exa- Oh, that is the cutest little thing ever. Five centimetres by five centimetres. It's only two inches square. <laughs> Look, he fits in my hand. <gasps> now, if anybody ever wanted a compact travel watercolour sketchbook, that's it right there. I could probably fit that in my mouth, actually. So we've got a little card here, and this is a five, $5 off subscription plan, so you give it to a friend, basically. What else have we got in here? Oh, we've got Copic Multiliners. These are quite good. I know people like these. Somebody asked me about these in the stash shop, actually. Fine nib inking pens. Are they all the same size. Pigment based dispos disposable. Oh, okay, not refillable. Mm, I don't like that. Yeah, they're all different sizes. So we've got a, a 0 0.03, which is teeny weeny weeny, a 0 0.05, a 0 0.1 and a 0 0.3. So that's quite a nice range of sizes and a handy little pack. A sweet, a Swedish fish. <laughs> what, what makes it Swedish? Is it from Sweden? Oh no, it's not. It's made in Turkey. Swedish. A Swedish fish distributed from New Jersey, made in Turkey. Okay, cool. Now what have we got in here? Share your unboxing with us. Okay, art snacks. I'll tag you in my video. You got it. Woo! An adding permanent acrylic marker. Look at the size of the nib on this. This is, why can I not get into us? Because it's sealed in plastic. Come on, Jem. What am I going to do with a marker this size? This, th this unboxing situation is really not going that well today. I thought this was supposed to be like a whole video of joy. Still can't get the lid off it. There we go. Look at the size of that. Like, what am I supposed to do with that? Disproportionate much? Okay, so we've got a massive paint marker. Permanent water-based. It's going to take forever <laughs> to prime that as well. It is a really pretty colour though. I'm enjoying the turquoise. What else have we got? A, a Tombow ABT markers, a brown one and a pink one. Interesting set of colours. These are, we've seen these plenty of times before. These have got excellent brush tips on them. So we've got this lovely flexible bendy end here. And on the other end, we've got this nice small bullet tip so that we can get some fine lines and details in. And we also have a mono twin as well. Again, I'll just take the ends off of these. So I never really saw the point in this pen, I'll be honest. We've got a plastic nib at one end, which is good for uniform lines. And then we've just got a, what I would call a fine liner uh, tip at the other end. So we've got fine liners, uh, more liners, and oh my word. And more liners and some brush markers. Uh, oh, what else has got in here? We've got a little sticker as well. I love that it's a pencil shape like a pretzel, that really appeals to me. Okay, uh, truthfully, aside from the sketchbooks, which I am super excited about, I was really hoping if we were going to get watercolour sketchbooks that we would get some sort of watercolour. And we've got a disproportionately large marker pen. We've got a set of fine liners and another pen that's more or less a fine liner and two brush pens. These are water soluble though, but... Anyway, let's have a let's have a little look. So this 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 menu is the the like the course supplies. So what would be if you got the smaller art snacks box, which would be the weenie sketchbook, the tombos, the broad marker, and the the tombow mono twin, small but might okay. So that. If you bought the smaller box, that's what you would be getting. So in the bumper box, there is the addition of the multi-liner set. So more fine liners, that makes sense. And then the bigger version of this sketchbook. Small but mighty, the zigzag book is an urban sketcher's dream. It's filled with 18 pages of high quality watercolour. Okay. Tombow dual brush pens. Water-based marker is a total package. These are really, really popular, these pens, and I understand why. The br Right, see that? Why, why would you provide this with this? Broad tipped tool features a chisel nib that can produce varying line widths. Highly pigmented, light fast. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Staff favourite, the Tombow Mono Twin Permanent Marker. That's right, this is the permanent version. The fine and broad tips in this marker deliver super black solid lines that last. You can layer your dual brush pens on top without worry. The Mono's oil-based ink is instantly smear proof. 
Okay, they're, they're promoting their shop as well. Take the Art Stacks Challenge. Use all of the products in your box to create an original piece of art. There's no theme or anything with this. That's interesting. Okay, uh, so the, the Art Snacks Plus is the big zigzag book and the, the Copic multi-liner pack of four. Paint one or two pages as you would with a regular sketchbook. Okay, so there's nothing new about this. This is literally just a bigger version of that, which is fine. The multi-liners... Uh, sturdy nibs and write smoothly archival pigment based ink is waterproof and copic proof when dry obviously for the same company meaning it will not bleed when coloured over with copic markers or other alcohol based markers flip over for more fun stuff okay so there's some promotional stuff on the back there uh, right okay we've got to test out these supplies see before we do see for, see for nearly £29 which is just the cost of the box normally, not including shipping. I, realistically, I'm not going to use this. Now, again, you've got to remember that this is very much down to personal preference and what you like to do with art. I am absolutely over the moon with these two sketchbooks. I really am. The little one's going to be so much fun. But realistically, out of these supplies, that's probably what I'm going to use. In fact, probably not because I've already got one. Ah. Something like this, I wish they would just stop putting them in, in art boxes, unless there's a theme, you know, if you're given a massive canvas to work on and it was maybe like a, like a street art or graffiti theme box, that should absolutely be in there. But this to me is just a hodgepodge of supplies. There's nothing really exciting in terms of colour combinations. That you're not really getting any guidance from this box. I feel like Art Snacks is a really, really basic box and it's quite a lot of money for something like that. The the named supplies, though, I mean, you're paying for the names, absolutely, because these are all very well-known brands and very high-quality products. If this was going to be a regular, you know, an indication of the regular supplies from Art Snacks, I would absolutely not want to buy another one of these boxes. As a, as a more experienced artist, I've come across all of these supplies before. Perhaps not in this particular branded sense, but like you know, the likes of the zigzag sketchbooks, there's nothing new here to me and they're, they're, I'm not really getting anything else from the box. I, I see there's no art prompts or, you know, there's, yeah, that's really disappointing. I'm actually really disappointed, which is a shame. It's a real shame. Anyway, I'm going to test out these supplies. I'm not going to do it in these sketchbooks. I'm going to show you the, the zigzagginess of them just because it's fun. But I'm going to keep these for little projects. I'll test these supplies out on my multimedia paper. Again, like, you know, 300 GSM paper. It's, it's meant, it is meant to be, you know, it tells you on the back. It's white watercolour paper. Why would you give us watercolour sketchbooks and not give us any watercolour? Wee! These are great fun. They're so good and you can use both sides as well. So if you could do one project on one side and one on the other. And I love the cover on these as well. It's, it's oh, it's textured. It makes a noise. Super nice. And this little one, oh, this is going to be amazing. I feel like this is going to be like um like a comic book oh, story of a frog. I don't know why a frog, but I just feel like there should be a frog involved here. I'm going to do a little watercolour storybook of a frog. <sighs> It's so weeny. That is super cute. And again, both sides. It folds up beautifully. Like, I can literally fit that in your my shirt pocket. Yeah, I've got a shirt pocket here. <laughs> That's amazing. So slightly worth it for me just for the two sketchbooks. But other than that, I'm incredibly underwhelmed. A brown and pink colour. This turquoise colour is really nice. I just wish it was in a smaller marker. But it's boxes like this that, you know, makes you realise why people outside of the US don't get this box. £36 for for this. Now, if we if we bear in mind that in the UK we pay £35 for an artful box, which is a quarterly box, and when you see the amount of supplies and what's involved in that, you know, it makes you realise that like the shipping fees and things make this absolutely not worth it for anybody outside of the US. Okay, oh, look at that. <laughs> I could probably quote every page in this weenie little sketchbook in approximately 16 seconds. But that is crazy beans. That is so cool though. Like that is cool, but it's just I've got no use for it whatsoever. It feels like rawr, substantial. Oh, that's funny. Okay, let's take a look at the ABTs. Oh, look at that colour of pink. The brush nibs on these pens are lovely and they are water soluble as well. So you can create a sort of painterly effect with them. 
I, I, I'm kind of against stuff like that because if I want a painterly effect, I'll just use watercolor paint. It's the the color palette's actually quite good. Like these colors go well together. It's kind of giving me uh, like ice cream shop vibes. So, I mean the, these these tombos they're they're great, but they're really unexciting. And like uh, yeah, okay, a thick line and a thin line, and they're not there's not that much of a difference between them. These are super reliable though, in terms of using things over the top of them. And the Copic uh, multi liners here we go zero point one, lovely zero point zero three e. 0.3. You guys can't even see them, they're just so fine. Oh, I've got to be very careful with that. The 0 0.05. So on the finer side of fine liner lines, you can see here, that is literally the contents of the box. I would be interested to find out if you guys in the US think that Art Snacks is worth it. Because in all of this, this is only a tiny snippet of what these companies provide. And as we all know, anybody that buys subscription boxes at any stage knows that sometimes it can be a bit of a hit of a miss. A hit or a miss. And I feel with this box, if it, if it wasn't for these sketchbooks, this would definitely be a miss. And uh, I'm a little bit sad about that because I was excited. But yeah. I think the thing as well is it was like what I was talking about earlier about about being inspired and getting excited. There is nothing. I, I, it's not sparking any sort of creative juices. So the art snacks challenge, from what I can gather here, is the art snacks challenge is just to use these supplies and create an artwork. You know, there's no guidance on it, so you can pretty much do anything, which is kind of cool in a way. If you're in the US, it might be a little bit different, and especially if you like massive chunky markers and Tombos. Even at that, if you're really into, say, Tombow markers, you're only getting two markers for your $35? $35? $39, sorry. Them's pretty expensive Tombow markers. <laughs> I want to know how much the sketchbooks are retailing at on here, what they say they're retailing at. $17 and $7.21. I think we could probably get them cheaper than that. So the two sketchbooks are retailing uh, at 70, well, recommended retail price, which we know is always slightly higher than what you'll pay, at $17 and $7, which is roughly £15 for the two of them. I found this one online, at, shippable in the UK on Amazon for £9. Uh, <laughs> so I don't think that one's worth £6 personally. So, right, okay, anyway, enough about that. So a little bit disappointed, but I'm really happy I've got these little sketchbooks. On to the next box. So this next box I know very little about. It is Smart Art, and this is another box that's come from the US. This is by far the most expensive box that I have bought. It is $49. I also had to pay shipping on it as well. So this box totaled for me £47. It's quite a big box and on the website they talk a lot about how the supplies are full size and that they're curated to give you a worry-free experience. So I am I'm holding, you know, I've got high expectations of this box. The box itself is very nice as well, it's quite robust. So I hope I can add this to the I'm excited about making art pile along with the scroller box. And not the um yeah, okay pile. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know what it is about art subscription boxes, they seem to like orange paper. Oh my, right, okay, there's loads of stuff in, there's a lot of stuff in here. Okay, I could actually cry right now. Smart, okay, so we've got some sort of, yeah, right, okay, we've got, this is a, like a project leaflet, I think, yeah, okay. The reason that I'm about to cry is there's a lino cutter in here. <laughs> we had a lino cutting box from Artful quite a while ago now, and that's basically what this box is. I did try the lino cutting and I had fun doing it, but it wreaked absolute havoc with my hand. I've got an old hand injury and I struggle with motor function pressure and I have no feeling in some of my fingers. So th this, I, I, I just, I'm not going to do this. I have tried this, I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to show you the supplies anyway. So this is a lino cutter and I love that it comes in a box. Uh, so this is a handle and there's different attachments that you get. And what that does is, oh, they're inside here, aren't they? Yeah, because these were missing when I got mine. <laughs> Okay, this is actually the third lino cutting box I've had because Upcrate did one as well. But these ends are different shapes and different sizes. So you can see that, that when you dig into your linoleum, that's going to give you different types of cuts and different depths of cuts. So there's one, two, there's five different blades there. And this is the Speedball one. Speedball, but the, 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 I know the brand Speedball from their, uh, their, their ink nibs you know, for dip pens, so they obviously like to make things out of metal, that makes sense. So that's a nice bit of kit that seems pretty good quality. 
I've got, I've got strawberry, strawberry Twizzler. Now, this is very novel for me because I'm in the UK and Twizzlers are not native to the UK. So that, that's quite exciting. I have tasted these before and I really like them. So thanks, Smart Art, for my Twizzler. <laughs> We have a set of paintbrushes and these are these are cheap paintbrushes. These look remarkably like the brush, brushes I buy from Flying Tiger. They yeah, they look very similar actually. They might not be, I might be might be telling you fibs, but we've got a nice set of different sizes of brushes here. And these are in inches again because they've come from the US. An eighth, three eighths, five eighths, a quarter, that means absolutely nothing to me. But yeah, we've got different sized brushes, so that's good. We've got a little squishy bottle, an atomizer, I think is the proper name, like this. That's really, they really do give you everything you need. Oh, we've got, we've got a light duty knife. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. It tells you, uh, it tells you which blades to use it with as well. Good. A little smart art sticker. Oh, that's quite cute. How very retro. Water soluble oil pastels. Now that's interesting. Okay, we did not have water soluble, soluble oil pastels before. This is new for me. Creamy oil pastels, which come in bright, vivid colours. You can apply and blend these pastels easily like regular oil pastels, but you can also use the pastels with water. Okay, well that might be fun. We've got two blocks of linoleum and they're quite thick as well. They're quite soft though, so in terms of actually having to gouge things, that should be should be fairly good and rather attractive pink colour. We've, they've given us a pair of scissors. <laughs> I've never had a pair of scissors in a subscription box before. And they're, uh, they're fairly sturdy scissors. That's not cheap, nasty scissors. Wow, I'm impressed. This is, this is actually a really good box. And you get a pad of actual printmaking paper from Strathmore. Uh, that's nice. Oh, okay. Uh, right, that's everything in the box. And you know something, even though it's something that I will absolutely not use, so some of these supplies will be going in the stash shop, guys. I I'm not putting myself through this again, I'm afraid. But I've never tried water-soluble water oil pastels, so that's something that I could and will use. And these scissors, like, <laughs> these, these scissors. And who doesn't need another exacto knife and an atomizer? Oh, my goodness. And a Twizzler. <laughs> Let's take a little look at the leaflet and see what's what with this. So yeah, okay, they're talking about uh, bro blo bleh, block printing and it gives you a little description here and it's very short descriptions granted of the different things. So two linoleum carving blocks, a soft surface that allows you to cut quickly and gently. The, the water soluble oil pastel set. <sighs> Great basic palette of colours to create various drawings with. Comes in convenient packaging with a plastic tray, cardboard sleeve to keep them neat and organised. They're great to have in your studio or take with you. I want to look. Oh, a step-by-step -step plan. Oh, we get a step-by-step -step plan. Oh, look, we get like a little mini tutorial. That's cute. Oh, they're in stick form as well. Oh, yeah. The way I was looking at that there, I thought it was like little cakes, you know, like you get cheap watercolours and, you know, like little round pans, but it is actually sticks. That's even better. Oh, look, they're so dinky. I think we might have to have a wee go at trying these out. Okay, that, that's that's made me really happy, actually. The lino cutter assortment, speed, uh, speedball linoleum cutters are made of the finest quality steel with long-lasting cutting edges. Comfort grip, heavy-duty linoleum cutter handle, a pop-off lid that reveals handy storage container within. The adjustable metal chuck makes it easy to install and change cutters. The craft and hobby knife, precision aluminium or aluminium if you're American. Cutting knife measures five sixteenths of by four and three quarters. Oh, I love you guys. The knife features four jaw machined holding head. The knife features a four jaw machined holding head for secure blade positioning, super sharp blade, snug fitting cap, precision cutting. Yeah, so that's just to help you along with your lino cutter. The printmaking pad, acid free paper sheets that are ideally suited for printmaking. Now, why are they ideally suited for printmaking? They, because printmaking requires a heavier paper. 280 GSM, medium, medium textured, so really uh, it's, it's watercolour weight paper, uh, you know, watercolour paper you would expect to be anywhere between 250 grams upwards, so it kind of fits into that category. Medium textured, natural white paper, strong and durable, yet soft enough to absorb many layers of ink. I might actually use this for acrylic ink, if it's used to soaking up several layers of ink. It's, it feels like a really good pad of paper. The scissors, oh my goodness, the scissors. You guys can buy a pair of scissors like this for $7. I'm coming to the States. Fulfill your cutting needs. <laughs> 
Ambidextrous scissors, yes. Uh, I've had the discussion before that I can't use left-handed scissors. I use right-handed scissors with my left hand. And a balanced feel. Yeah, okay. Ah, jeez. Uh, the round brush set, I missed that. Easy to clean and exceptionally durable. Yeah, these are retailing at $7, so what's that? About five, five pounds, maybe? This artist brush set is an excellent cho choice for oils and acrylics because it stands up to solvents and acrylic paints very well. These brushes have natural wood handles and a black gloss finish and seamless polished aluminium, aluminium for the house. I just want to compare these to the ones I've got. Okay, I retract my previous statement. They're similar, but they're not the same. And these feel a bit more, uh, a bit hardier than these cheap ones that I've got here. But they, you can t you can understand why I got that thought. They're very, very similar. Very similar indeed. This, the, the old, right, okay, the atomizer. It creates a stippled mist, which is ideal for many painting techniques. It's a squishy bottle. It's one of our uh, Scottish words from our live stream back at the beginning of Cave Mist. Okay, so it's giving you an actual project, project and it's telling you what to use which cutter to use as well. It, it's a fairly straight, like the steps are really nice and neat and I, it doesn't seem to be that there's steps missing, which is a kind of bugbear of mine when it comes to tutorials, but that's really nice. And we've got a, a festive project as well, which is, is nice too. And there's project pointers on the back as well. There's weekly prompts. So you've got four prompts there, one for every week of the month because this is a monthly box. I like that as well. That's nice. So we've got leaves, bells. So that's the first two that are in the project leaflet here. Tree bark and freeze. You do not have to, you do not need to follow all of the prompts in order or week to week. Just be sure to upload and tag us in all four by the end of the month to earn your peacock points. I'm assuming that'll be loyalty points of some description. Okay, as a box, collectively, this is this is the kind of cohesiveness that I would expect from a subscription box, particularly a subscription box that's fifty dollars. There is actually everything that you need here. It's it's a project centric box, and I like that. But these items, some of them stand alone as well. This can be used for a multitude of things. A little watercolor painting. The only things that are really project specific that can't be used anywhere else is the linoleum and the, the, the lino cutter itself. Everything else has other uses and you get a lot of mileage out of this stuff. I mean, a pair of scissors and a craft knife. How many times a day do I use those? A lot. The paper's really, really nice as well. And I've actually got an art supply that I've never tried before, despite this being a, a linoleum project, which I've done twice. All in all, I am super impressed with this. It's a little bit of a shame for me personally that I've forked out this money and it's, <laughs> and it's a lino cutting project, but that's the luck of the draw and that's the thing about subscription boxes. But I would highly recommend this box. I would actually get myself another one of these if they weren't so gosh darn expensive, but definitely worth it. So the linoleum cutting stuff I will put up in the stash shop probably in a week's time or so. So if that's something you're interested in getting your hands on, then you can keep your eyes peeled there. I can't get over these scissors. And we're definitely going to be trying these out. Let's try them out right now. I'm going to try them directly onto the key. Yeah, because you could use them like you would use pastel sticks as well. They're very soft though. So they're saying basically that if I uh, fire up a water brush, oh, oh they do. Let's get them. Oh my goodness. We're talking about offensive oranges, remember? Oh, they're quite messy. Because they're soft, it is coming off in my fingers. That's fairly pigmented as well. This paper just feels like watercolour paper to me. It feels like cold press watercolour paper. Yeah, look at that. That's nice. If anybody would like to see a, a video on water soluble oil pastels, please uh, let me know down in the comments. Yeah, this is a good box. I like this box. I just get the feeling that this particular company think up a project first and then say, right, what supplies do we need for them for the customer to be able to create this this project? And I think that's a much, much better way of thinking about things than some of the other offerings we have, like random markers, not uh, trying to get a dig in there at all. But yeah, this is a really good, well-rounded box, but I, I would expect it to be for the, for the, the cost of it, because it is a pretty expensive box. And to be honest, I, I don't know, if I could only have one box in the entire world and I was in the States, 
if my budget would stretch, I would maybe consider this. I would like to see what some of the other boxes look like before committing because $50 a month is a lot of money. I could see this being really popular in the UK as a quarterly box. You know, maybe with just a few more projects, I think that would be a, a really good thing. But unfortunately for us, with the postage on top of it, which was say 11, 11 pounds, so that shoe into like, what? Oh God, I can't even count. So it was seven, sixteen, seventeen dollars in postage, and you also run the risk of it being stopped at customs and having to pay customs fees on top of that. So it could end up being a really, really expensive box. But I am impressed. Smart art, you have got a thumbs up from me. Next up, we have the palette full pack. I have had one of these before and I was bitterly disappointed because it was full of pens. <laughs> so I'm really hoping that's not the case this time. Again, there's different sizes of these ones and this is the big one. So this is $35 and I paid £11 in shipping as well. So again, on the more expensive side, we'll see what this turns out like. The reason I have the box at this angle is that my personal address is on the front. This is the one that we get the... Oh, it's, it's, it's like Christmas worms this time. <laughs> I, I've just seen something that's actually made me want to cry. <laughs> the last palette full box that I got, it was Marabou markers that were in it. And I have just seen a Marabou marker pad. Oh, please don't do this to me. It is an A4 pad, which is nice. 75 GSM, acid free light fast paper. So an interesting pad of marker paper. Oh, I hate my life right now. <laughs> Move the noodles out the way. I have a cute little cat sticker. I've got a massive handful of markers and that's it. I have no information and no nothing. There is nothing else in the box of Christmas worms. Oh, what is like, oh, I give up, I give up. I have paid a fortune for this box and literally I have, that. That's that's what's in the box. There's no paperwork, there's nothing. Kind of annoying. Okay, I've had a look online uh, <laughs> and apparently you don't get other stuff in the box anymore. The prompts are all online as well, and there's four prompts for the, the month. <sighs> I think I just give up today, I really should give up. Right, let's take a look at the first of all, the fine liner. We've got a Winsor & Newton fine liner and a 0 0.1. Again, I've had one of these before. These are fairly reliable and they're nice to use, and they're a little bit unique because they've got this longer furrow here, and it means you can use it with things like rulers and whatnot and bump it up against the edge of things without it damaging the tip when you're actually drawing. So that's quite handy. Waterproof when dry. And you can, it will obviously take the alcohol markers as well. So we've got Marabou markers. <sighs> Sketch marker graphics. So we have a chisel nib and a bullet nib. Not unlike what we've just had in our up crate. This is very, very monotonous. So you can see here, same idea, same thing. And we've got a lovely shade of green. Warm, warm grey, <laughs> warm grey. And we have cool grey, lovely. At least we've got two different types of grey in this box. But probably more excitingly for some of you, we have some Copic markers. We have six Copic markers. And oh look, I've got one right beside me already. <laughs> oh, how many black Copic markers does a girl need? Um, So we've got some interesting colours here. We've got vermilion violet and pink we've got a prussian blue a light blue and a black and i can tell you straight off the bat i already own all of these colors i don't have a i've got quite a lot of copic markers but i don't have anywhere near all of them uh so yeah i think i should take this as a sign from the cosmos that i wasn't supposed to do this video at all oh uh, yeah, I just did a double check there just in case I do in fact own every single one of these markers so that instantly negates that from the value of the box for me. So I'm left with a marker pad, three Marabou markers, two of which are grey and a fine liner. It's really, really tough going. We're going to test out the marker paper though and see what it's worth. Naturally, I, I do actually have a selection of Copic sketch markers up in the stash shop anyway, but I will add these to the to the pile. So again, if anybody wants to grab those, you can go to the cave website here and you can go and pick those up for your good self at a very good price, obviously. Okay, so let's have a feel at the paper. The very first page has got a flaw in the middle of it, which is a marvellous way to start. Great, thanks very much. Feels very smooth though, very smooth. So let's try out these uh, sketch marker graphics. Okay, offensive green. So the chisel nibs, uh, they're quite juicy actually. They're, they're quite juicy. Let's try the other end. Yeah, these these feel exactly the same as the pro markers the, that we had way back in like several hours ago. 
See now that's two different shades of grey. That's what I'm talking about. This one's actually almost like a like a putty grey. It's actually quite a nice colour. I like it. I like it a lot. But the main thing about marker paper is, and it's what you know we want to test out. We want to to layer up the ink and see how it copes. So that's barely even visible on the other side of this sheet, let alone bleeding through onto here. But you know we we, we got we like to try things out properly here. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to hammer that one part. I want to see how these particular pens laid up as well. I have several videos on Copics already discussing how this works uh, and I'm talking subscription box unboxings. So I'll link one of those down below and in the dis uh, in the description and also in the end card for you as well. And you can go and hear me talk about Copic markers as alcohol markers. Now I quite like this, uh, this Winsor & Newton fine liner and it's a strange colour. <laughs> it's it's grey. I thought it was going to be black. It's grey. And it's got like a weird purple tint to it. That's really strange. It's very, very fine though. Say so 0.1. So we're all about the teeny tiny fine liners today, aren't we? I'm sure you can't, you can't not detect the complete and utter dismay in my voice about this. I have literally spent hundreds and hundreds of pounds on subscription boxes and they're just big boxes of disappointment for me right now, they really are. So I find it interesting that Palletful have done away with putting any information in their box. They have everything on their website now, which I'm sure is a is an environmental step that they've taken. It just makes opening the box quite underwhelming. I always say that a subscription box, it's, it's not just a box of supplies, it's an experience. It's the opening of the box and how cohesive it feels. I literally feel as if palatable. I've just grabbed a bunch of alcohol markers and chucked them in and gone, oh, there's a bit of paper they can use. It's not a nice feeling and I, I definitely, definitely don't feel like it justifies the price at all, especially this is the Premier Palette Pack. Just to add insult to injury, this actually wasn't part of the box. This was given in this month's box because apparently it was supposed to be in last month's box and it was defective and this is the replacement. So yeah, uh, the the if you're interested, the pa the palatable pack prompts they they do similar to uh, what we saw in the art snacks box and there's one for every week for your whole month, and the prompts are science fiction, favorite snack, celebrate, and ornament. So there's no theme there, or you know, there it's uh, it's just not cohesive at all. I am I am bitterly I really am like I'm I'm virgin on speechless here. This paper's okay. It's it's very very bleed proof. We're doing well there, but those three layers of markers actually buckled the paper, and the paper is starting to pill up as well. So I can't even say that the paper's excellent quality. You're basically paying for six random Copic markers. And that to me is just, like this has been done a million times. And it's almost as if some of these companies have no scope, you know, they're very insular and they don't pay attention to what's going on round about them. If I was a regular subscriber to Palette and that's me, I've had two Palette Full boxes now and I've had markers on both of mine, which is unfortunate and that's not a reflection on them as a company. Uh, they're also really dirty as well. They've got Christmas worm dust all over them. A box that's meant to be creative, to give to creatives, needs to be creative. This is like the most on it. Can you imagine opening up a box this size, especially when it's come from another country and you've paid extra so that you can have one and you literally open it up and dig amongst a couple of bits of paper and that's what you're faced with. Like, that doesn't inspire anything in me at all. It really doesn't. I would rather have kept this money and at least gone and bought marker paper that I know that's good. And even if I didn't have these Copic markers, I could go and buy some in the colours that I wanted and I wouldn't, yeah, just... So yeah, and I, I say it's not as if the paper's great as well. And then of course we've got a really cute sticker. So that is a, like a zero out of 10 for Palettefull. I understand them wanting to put things online and save paper, that's important, but it's, it takes away from the experience of the box and when you're going to pay $35 for a box which is tw you know, £27, £28 for a monthly box yeah take the money and go buy some Copics and colours you don't have guys okay last and hopefully not least <laughs> otherwise I'm going to have to go and pour myself a cavemas drink after this we've got the Artful box now most of you know I have a bit of a soft spot for Artful boxes because number one, it's a quarterly box. So in terms of budgeting your art funsies and with you know things that are actually important to pay for, like um food and stuff, 
although it's quite a lot of money at £35, you're only paying that once every three months. So when you spread that out across the three months, it is cheaper than buying a monthly box. But the contents in here will sustain you for three months because these boxes are huge, they're heavy. The, the outside of this month's box kind of gives it away. It's a screen printing box. So we're going to take a look at this and hopefully we're going to get a bit more joy out of uh, this than some of the other boxes. I would also just like to point out as well, I got this box for free. That's why you saw the includes paid promotion at the start of the video. This was kindly sent to me by the wonderful people at Artful who are, the, they're, they're great guys. So thank you very much to Artful for this. Hopefully it will bring me plenty of joy and, and, and we have the upgrade box as well. But these boxes are absolutely chock full. They will keep you busy for three months, no problem. And my pull tab does. <laughs> see, see what's happening today, everyone. This kind of sums up the entire like last three months for me. Everything that could possibly go wrong with anything has. Oh, it's not even. This is so pretty. This is so pretty. I also told uh, the, the team at Artful that just because they've given me a box for free does not mean that they're going to get a good review because I am not swayed by things like that. I'm, I'm bitter now I've been unboxing so many subscription boxes. I always give a fair review, but that this looks impressive. So we've got, oh, so this is acrylic paint. The smell in this box is getting me excited as well. Look at the colour of that, wow. Oh, it's a bit whiffy. <laughs> Quick, let's sniff some more. Oh no. We've got aquafine, aquafine masking fluid. This stuff is awful. Like it's absolute, it stinks. I have other masking fluid in another brand that I, that I will use instead of this. I'm not even going to open this. It's as actual masking fluid, you know, in terms of the job it's supposed to do, it's very, very good, but I cannot stand the smell of it. I'm quite sensitive to chemical smells like that. Uh, so yeah, that'll be going to the stash shop as well. <laughs> Not very well here, are we? Okay, let's look at the, these paints. We've got red. Okay, so we've got red, yellow, black, and blue. Look at this red as well. Oh wow! That's amazing. The, these little tubs, they're, they're plastic tubs, but the lids are actually metal. It makes them feel really sturdy. Okay, so this is our. There's a name for this. I don't know what it is, but this is your squisher to like a squeegee to press down on your print i know i know nothing about screen print but i know that there is so much stuff in this freaking box so as per usual as well artful always give us um a selection of blank greetings cards with envelopes the parent company of artful is a company called oh Dear, and they started out with greetings cards type stuff and that's uh this is kind of like a nod to that these are really great i keep them and they're really handy for when you've forgotten someone's birthday <coughs> oh <laughs> So excited. That's surprisingly lightweight actually. It seems quite well constructed as well. Um, the frame's hollow, that's why it's so light. We've got mixed, we always get a huge pad of paper from Artful as well. Wow. Oh, a huge pad of paper. So this is the mixed media pad. So they have cartridge paper, watercolour paper and mixed media paper as far as I know. I absolutely love their cartridge paper. Anyway, yes, yeah, so we've got what we need here. This is so exciting. I don't know this stuff's <laughs> We've got a paintbrush. Okay, so we've got some sort of black. Uh, these these have got little lines in them. Mm. See, I don't know anything about screen, print, actually, screen printing. I don't know. Yeah, this is... Okay, so these are like frames or stencils, maybe they might be called. This is exciting. I don't know anything. So there's numbers and letters as well. Oh, this is really cool. Uh, yeah, we've got a paintbrush too. And this is a number two artful uh, synthetic brush. I love these artful brushes. I use them all the time and I love the handles on them too. Very classy. Right. Now, ha! See, if you want a subscription box, mag box magazine, this is what you need, one of these. See, this, it's a lot bigger, it's a lot more comprehensive, but you've got to remember that this is designed to last you three months, not the standard month that you find with scroller box and upgrade and the like. So, let's learn about screen printing and other stuff. These magazines are absolutely chock full like absolutely rammed to the gills with everything that you could ever want from an art magazine and 
if this wasn't in a subscription box, this would stand alone as an art magazine by itself on a, a you know, like a newsagent shelf. It's taken Artful a while to get here. The first magazine from when they started the boxes over a year ago was terrible. Okay, so I'm just going to have a quick, uh, a quick squish through this because I have never seen most of these types of things. Uh, so they have an in-house screen printing guru, so that's good. So this is, um, this screen is... It has 80 treads per centimetre, that means nothing to me. The process we're going to walk you through is at home screen printing. Though this differs from commercial process, this screen can be used for both. They can also be used as regular acrylic paints. Masking fluid is to cover up bits that you don't want the paint to get on. It is called a squeegee, oh my god, it's actually called a squeegee, yes! Okay, so yeah, the st the, the stickers, these the, they, are, they are stickers, they're stencils, I was right as well. Okay, cool. So there's the history of screen printing and they also give you, uh, they also give you the basics. So with most things like this, I don't really have to go through steps like this with subscription boxes. I've been unboxing subscription boxes for nearly four years. I need to read this this time and that's a really nice thing. It's really refreshing. So they've also got, uh, the, this is, um, you know, we're starting to get into the, act, the actual magazine now. So with these magazines, there's lots of different interviews and there's usually lots of tutorials as well. Oh, look at that for screen. That's lovely. That's really nice. That's, that's what I'm talking about, screen printing. So I see lots of interviews. Uh, here we go. There's a beginner's monoprint, an advanced monoprint advanced mixed media overlay so we're, we're going through the going through the steps here goodness me lots of inspiration lots of tutorials so even though i had no clue what i was doing i will be able to do this because i have proper instructions so this is the upgrade box so if you like the box you can then get yourself some additional supplies these retail it i think it's normally 20 pounds and i have got a, a five inch palette knife oh yes that's for smooshing. I like a bit of smooshing. And we've got some extra colours. Okay, <laughs> green and ultramarine blue. So that's the blue that went in, that was in the, the main box. And we've got ultramarine as well. We've got some washi tape. I'm always happy to have washi tape. I go through a lot of washi tape. Uh, what else have we got? We've got white and orange as well. So that's a really nice balance of colours actually. Okay. Oh, what else is in here? There's more stuff. Oh, these are blank vinyl sheets, so we can make our own stencils. Oh, these ones have got shapes on them. <laughs> so easily excited. Okay, so we've got extra, extra stencils as well. What a box. Okay, out of all the boxes we've had, this is by far the one that excites me most, but it's probably because it's something I've not done before. But this is what I'm talking about for £35. You've got all this acrylic paint. Even if you don't want to do screen printing, you've got one, two, three four five we've got six tubs of acrylic paint but the point is that without the upgrade box minus well apart from not having a white that was maybe the only thing but you've got your primaries so you have the ability to mix different colors you know there's 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 no hassle there at all and black is obviously always a good color to have as well yeah this is the way a subscription box should look guys I'm, I'm, I am mightily impressed. I'm a wee bit scared though. I think we'll definitely have to do something with this box in uh, in the new year, that's for sure, because I am freaking desperate. So the nice thing about Artful is there is, you don't have to buy the upgrade box. It's not a requirement. So if you come across something that you're not so keen on, uh, for me, the likes of the Lionel printing box, it just wasn't feasible for me. I, I wouldn't have wanted the, the, uh, the upgrade for that, but if you're really into it and you really enjoy it, then you can get some more more of the good stuff, which is lovely. I did it with the pastels box, the soft pastels box, and it was definitely worth it. This artful box is absolutely worth it, and I'm not just saying that. You guys know I will not be, I, you know, I'm always very fair and impartial. The, the only complaint I have about artful boxes as it stands just now is with some of the tutorials in the magazine, they've clearly been cut down from tutorials from elsewhere because they do take them from books and things like that. And there are huge, huge chunks of steps missing in some of the more intermediate and uh, complicated projects. Th there has to be a balance between 
what they can fit in the magazine and you know keeping things concise and all the rest of it there might even be copyright issues around that as well I don't know but I found I found it very frustrating trying to do some of the tutorials and getting on really well and then all of a sudden finding out I'm lost at sea I'm out there on my own especially with something like screen printing which I've never done in my in my puff so it'll be interesting to see how we get on so we might tackle that into the new year so Artful for me this month's getting a massive thumbs up. Number one, because of the amount and quality of the products, but secondly, because it's something that I have never tried and that's very, very unusual for me. I'm really glad we finished on a high note. Uh, this was going to be really depressing if we didn't. <laughs> To celebrate this mega unboxing today, we are now going to move on to the giveaway because I've had quite enough of unboxing boxes. <laughs> Today's giveaway has been brought to us by Artful and I'm hoping that you're going to get excited about this because I have two sets of giveaway prizes here and this is a worldwide giveaway. Not only do I have two Artful subscription boxes, so I have the Lino printing box that I was just talking about, but I also have the soft pastel box as well. But in addition to these, I also have the upgrade boxes for each of these as well. So I have the Lino upgrade box and I have the soft pastel upgrade box as well. I think you'll agree that this is an amazing set of prizes. So having the two sets to give away means that two lucky cavers are gonna get a little bit of artful in their life in the next couple of weeks. If you would like to enter this draw, I want you to go down underneath this video into the comment section. Tell me which boxes out of this entire video that you think have been the best and worst and why. If you answer that, then I am going to put you into the giveaway draw tomorrow for a chance to win these boxes with their upgrade boxes. The winners will be drawn at random, you will not get to choose whether, which box you get, so it is the luck of the draw whether you get the pastel box or the lino box sets. So get your little thinking caps on, love to hear your opinions, I know you all like to let your guts rumble sometimes, so get down into the comments section and tell me the best and worst boxes of this video. You guys have clearly made my opinion clear to you all. The draw for this is slightly different because this is the last giveaway, entries will be open until midday UK time tomorrow which is obviously the 1st of January 2022 and it's just to give people a little bit of time to get their entry in. So best of luck to those of you who want to enter. This has been probably the most epic day of cave miss for me and I'm very tired now and I want to go make myself a cup of tea. So I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope you are all enjoying the festive period in one shape or form and that you're all very relaxed and have had some downtime regardless of whether you celebrate Christmas or not. So that's it for today, guys. I'm a wee bit sad in saying that I'll see you back in the cave tomorrow for the final day of Cavemas. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Bye for now.